Yondum Pernlai from Mongolia. Sancho from Costa Rica. I always uh, find it uh, fun to watch uh, Yondum Pernlai. He's uh, quite an unorthodox fighter. He already had a good performance in 2021. Silver medal in Tashkent. One of his uh, best performances. Fifth place at the World Championship, so no medals there. A bronze medal at the Masters. And uh, he won a Grand Prix. I remember this very well because it was in my home country, in uh, The Hague. Here we see the same technique as we see, saw yesterday. With uh, the Russian, who won the 60 kilograms. He made this, uh, Neuwaza, th this transition from Tachi to Neuwaza every time. Well, if you know anything about Mongolian wrestling, then you know for sure Yondon Pernlai is somebody who did this sport because now he is uh, holding his opponent in a traditional judo grip, but he also loves to have two hands on the back, sometimes two hands on the belt. Great lifting. Something you see uh, in the... Mongolian wrestling so often they have a different uh, gi with uh, shorter sleeves so it's more important to uh, grab your opponent close to the body Ochigari attempt there by the Mongolian and good Neuwaza here Sancho in trouble now but uh, he managed to escape Strong right hand there by the Mongolian. This is uh, what he wants, yes. Good attack to the other side, using his legs. He's not taking too much risk because he knows he's the one who shows the most. And uh, I think Sancho is close to uh, a third penalty. It's completely dominating the Mongolian, dominating in the grips, yes. So he's not taking any risk by throwing Sancho, and that's a shame in my opinion, because I think he was uh, strong enough to make a score, but uh, that's not important anymore. It's uh, the third penalty for Sancho, and uh, it's over. It's Yondon Pernlai who wins uh, this fight. Well, you cannot say that uh, Sancho did not try. Here it was almost. Throwing out his shoulder throw against Mariyama. Yondon 
Jonen Perenlai against Abdel Magut. Mongolia against Egypt. Egypt showed us a great Uranage, the first round. That's one of my uh, friends from my club in uh, Harlem. Georgian from uh, origin, lived in uh, Holland for a long time, and now coaching for Egypt, Abdel Magut. Just to uh, show the traveling people in our uh, in our uh, judo uh, in our judo. Uh, lives if you walk around here in the world championships you see so many uh, familiar faces all spread out over the world And he's doing a okay great job in Egypt. Egypt uh, was uh, quite a strong, one of the stronger African uh, countries in judo for a few years. Lost it a little bit, but uh, they're now back with some uh, strong uh, fighters. And uh, let's hope uh, that Egypt uh, will continue developing um, judo. I think, uh, well, of course, this is uh, the north of Africa, but I think Africa is one of the continents with so much potential. But, uh, well, that will not happen in uh, one or two years, of course. You need uh, uh, a lot more time for it, but it's also the IGF who puts uh, effort in it. They have all programs for uh, different countries. If you see here at the World Championships, there are almost 120 countries that are competing. And of course, not every country has a, a big uh, judo history or is a big judo country. But it's uh, great to see all those different countries that there are people that uh, love our sport. Well... If there's one country where they know judo and they love judo, it's Mongolia. It's Yondon Pernlai fighting for Mongolia. I said it before, it's an unorthodox fighter. And uh, I always love to watch him. Now problems for the um, Egyptian straight into the whole town. This transition from Tachiwaza to Newaza, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't sharp. He wasn't sharp because it was his attack just just like Wazari. The last second he managed to uh, get out of this situation. Here, it is his attack. Good attack though. This is the time. Here he had some he, he had the time to uh, escape, but Jonan Perenlai just um, grabbed his uh, arm. And uh, Wazari on the board, really close uh, to the Ippon. 20 seconds is Ippon, but after 19 seconds, Abdul Mahout managed to escape. So he has a small chance now with one minute uh, on the board to equal the score or maybe score an Ippon. But Jonan Perenlai, experienced. Look. That's the left hand on the belt. The Mongolian wrestling style. They like to fight real close to their opponents. Valuable seconds here for Jonan Perenlai. He's on top of his opponent. He can work on the ground. And then the seconds are ticking away. His coach, Georgi from uh, 
Georgia slash the Netherlands, now working for Egypt. He will uh, tell his pupil that he has 22 seconds, so one more chance of a big attack. Let's see what he has in the tank. One more big attack, but Jonam Pernlai is defending, controlling the arm. This was it. It was already the counterattack was already out of the Newasa situation, but it doesn't matter anymore. It's the Wazari on the board for the Mongolian, and he's uh, into the next round. Here it was, strong attack, but also uh, great defense. And already in the, in the air, it was Jonan Pernlai who thought of the transition into Newaza, holding the... That was enough for the Wazari. Mariama in the quarterfinal, and he will be facing the winner of this fight, Yondom Pernlai from Mongolia, Shopanov from the RGF. Strong start from the Mongolian. Wrapping in the belt, turning Yondam Perlai. That's something uh, we see more and more often, putting the arm in the, be uh, in the belt. Yondan Perlai is so dangerous with this counter-attack. If you um, throw in your leg, the inner thigh uh, leg, uh, then um, he's so strong in rolling you over on your side. Shopanov, he was the man in Kazan Grand Slam in his home country. He won the gold medal. And uh, it was yesterday that uh, his teammate won the gold medal. And he's still in the running. Look at the uh, grip of uh, Yonam Pernlai. I already said before, it's a really strange judoka, unorthodox. It's uh, the Mongolian wrestling style. So you don't want to be in this position with him. But uh, of course, you know the Russians, they know their skills as well when they're close to their opponents. So maybe 
they feel secure with it or uh, confident. If I see it, I'm like, whoa, I don't want to be close to uh, this Mongolian. Just keep him as far away as possible because when he has his hands, sometimes he has two hands on the belt, two hands on the back or on the belt, hooks in and pff, then he's so dangerous. But uh, it looks like uh, Shopanov is feeling quite comfortable with it, but uh, not too comfortable though, because uh, Jonam Pernay threw out the Sumigeshi. Again, the, his long right arm over the back of the Russian. What a lift from the Russian. But this uh, four minutes gone, this Jonan Perron is a nightmare to fight for sure. Always, you know, you see also the height difference. Long arms, long legs, every time this right arm over the back. close by battling himself into your um, your body First 30 seconds in this golden score are for the Mongolian for sure. He looks the more dominant. The left hand of uh, Shopanov is uh, way too low, in my opinion, on the lapel. That gives uh, Jonan Perenlai uh, the chance to get close. Well, there's the hawk with two hands. And yes, there it is. It's Jonan Perenlai who throws Shopanov for a big hip on. That's what I said before. He's so dangerous when he has the two hands on the back. You don't want the Mongolian to be there. You don't want to be in that decision or in that situation. Because uh, that's uh, what he did, I think, when he was three months old <laughs> with the Mongolian wrestling style. So. Jondon Perenlai wins against Shopanov. Look, two hands on the back. Not, not even grabbing the judo gi from Shopanov. No, just holding his own hands. And that's good, you know. Sometimes it goes so fast. You look at it and you think, okay, um, well, she just misses the leg. But uh, it was on purpose from Primo. So Primo is the winner. Now the quarterfinal, Maruyama from Japan, Yondan Perenlai from Mongolia. Two completely different uh, judokas in style. It's the Mongolian who has the more wrestling style. Mariyama, of course, straight up with the Suchimata. I think Jonan Perenlai, because he is a right-handed fighter, it is uh, possible for uh, Mariyama to launch the Uchimata. But Mariyama needs a lot of uh, space. And uh, if Jonan Perenlai every time gets really close to his opponent, then it's difficult to launch this Uchimata. 
But here it is. Great defense by the Mongolian. Oh, un unbelievable. The lift with the left leg of Mariyama is so, so powerful. Here, this is the Mongolian style, but I think too long on the belt. You can grab the belt, but then you have to make the attack. So for sure, this will be a penalty for Jonam Pernlai. Yes, and he knows it. Well, this is definitely a clash in styles. But uh, I think it is really difficult for Jodan Perenlai to keep on doing this for four minutes long. Mariyama will get this one moment. Yes, second uh, penalty for Jodan Perenlai because he grabbed underneath the belt. Um, so... A lot of trouble now for him there, Suchimata again into the Sutimi and again to Uchimata. I think Mariyama, he wants to make a lot of attacks, so the chance of a third penalty for uh, Jonan Perenlai is, uh, is big. Try to get close, there it is again with the uh, arms on the back of Mariyama, but Mariyama is strong enough. This was, uh, of course, uh, a false attack. To be honest, it has to be a Shido for Mariyama. I don't think they will call it, but he just jumped on his knee, knees uh, without any attempt of scoring. But he gets the benefits of the doubt uh, also because of all these... Uh, yeah, Jonathan Perenlai is uh, looking at the referee like, well, I threw him on his back. Yeah, but we're already Newaza. Still not a done deal. You can see Mariyama is having trouble when his uh, left arm is uh, is controlled. Now he has the right grip. Can he launch a Suchimata? Yes, he can. <laughs> well, but this Mongolian, <laughs> it's a real warrior, eh? He's also tall, long legs, so also when Mariyama launches the Uchimata, I think the whole world will fall into a score. Look at the way he's fighting, unbelievable. I said to the round before, if you see this man on the contest sheet and you have him in first or second fight, man, it's a nightmare. Again, controlling the left arm of Mariyama. And then you see the... Uh, then you see that Mariyama is quite one-sided. And that's what I also said when Abe or Mariyama, when you have to make the decision who will go, the... 
diversity of, of uh, attacks from Abe is so much bigger than Maruyama. His Uchimata is absolutely top class, of course. This man is world champion, so no doubt about that, that uh, he's an absolutely brilliant uh, judoka. But when he cannot make his uh, Uchimata, then there's not much around. Good foot sweep there. Of course, in this quarterfinal, the Japanese, well, now he's in trouble. This is what, uh, yeah, but will they give him a, do they see this as an attack? Because, yeah, well, there's a Shido for Mariyama. It's, <laughs> now he has the end, but it's just, it's, it's not enough. He's going to work really hard for it now because Jonan Perenlai, he smells, he has a really small chance of winning this quarterfinal and he smells it. What a quarterfinal we're watching here at the, uh, Budapest, the World Championships, the second day. Well, this is what Jon Perlai wants, you know. He's so good in uh, counter-attacking those Uchimatas. Also the best Uchimata in the circuit, the Uchimata from Mariyama. And it's not that fresh anymore, of course, after five minutes of fighting. <laughs> well, Jonan Perlai has to make an attack now. And uh, because uh, this were two escape attacks from Mariyama, but good enough. He knows to Chimata that will be uh, quite difficult to uh, throw Yonan Perlai with it. But uh, now it's Yonan Perlai who also has to make an attack. Well, again, really close by countering. <laughs> Please, referee, continue. Almost six minutes of fighting. I think uh, it's uh, it's done. It's finished, and. Uh, It's the Mongolian who gave everything, Mariyama also. The third penalty, of course. The best is to see a win by a score, but uh, this was a great, great quarterfinal, real entertaining, a clash of styles, but in the end it's Mariyama who wins. You had to go real deep for it. Well, that was out of the Newasa situation, in my opinion. But...
So here we are. The rapid charge. Men under 66 kilograms in white for France, Le Blouche. And in blue for Mongolia, Yondon Pernlai. Yondon Pernlai, who gave Maruyama a real hard time in the quarterfinal. difficult for uh, Jonnen Perenlai to break through the grips of uh, Le Blouche. That is what he wants, the Mongolian. He wants to fight as close as possible to his opponent. But uh, Le Blouche looks uh, really strong. Knows how to uh, keep the gap between him and the Mongolian. And also uh, is um, controlling his sleeve quite easy good switch there from uh, left to right Seonage on his knees Every time uh, Le Blouche managed to get the left hand again on the collar, on the lapel of uh, Jonnen Pernlai. But it's amazing eh, the way the Mongolian is fighting. It's so hard to keep your uh, hands every time in front of him. There it is, the hand on the back of Le Blouche. Le Blouche again <coughs> tries to uh, break the grips.
and it's a difficult situation. For me, Le Blouch is the one who tries to make a judo technique. But it wouldn't be strange if they will give him a third penalty. Jondon Perlai looks like a bull. Every time he comes to Le Blouch, straight forward. And this was a good attempt by Le Blouch. So, four minutes gone. Yeah, look at the Frenchman. Already gave everything. This was uh, close, but no um, control. So, Jondon Perenlai picks up also uh, a second penalty. And for me, this is the right decision because it looks every time he comes like a bull he comes uh, close to his opponent but without a judo technique <coughs> it's fun to watch though you know the way he's fighting but uh, you want to see uh, a judo technique as well Well, here he's dangerous, the Mongolian. Look at the right hand, the way he had the, the hand on the neck of Le Blouch. Is there still some energy left in the Frenchman? The Mongolian can do this uh, day and night. At least it looks like it. What a hard fight. Well, I love hard battle, and uh, but I'm a, I'm I'm a judo lover. So for me, the one who uh, tries to make the normal judo techniques is Le Blouch, and not Jonan Perenlai. His way of fighting is uh, really uh, entertaining, though. Oh, that was a good Koichi attempt. <laughs> oh. The one who wins this fight, he will be in the bronze medal contest, but that will be at 5 o'clock, and for sure they will need this few hours of rest, especially Le Blouch. <coughs> but it's over. It's Jondon Perenlai who wins after almost seven minutes of fighting. And... Yeah, it was Le Blouch that just, I don't want to say he gave up, but after all this fighting of Jondon Perenlai, it was just over. It was no energy left. He gave everything. Yeah, that is uh, how emotion looks like.
So, <clears throat> again, it was uh, Le Bleu who tried the judo technique, but look at also the grip from uh, the Mongolian. Zuma Kanov from Kazakhstan, he was injured, so it was not possible for him to fight for the bronze medal contest. So, Yondon Perenlai, okay, no fight for the bronze, but... He has uh, to come out, though, and uh, oh, that's, the, uh, that's the protocol now. They, uh, they'll, uh, they'll walk him out. He fought really hard for it today, so it's a well-deserved medal for uh, the Mongolian. And, well, I'm a judo purist, so I love classical judo. And uh, when everybody was, would be fighting like Jonam Bernlai, then I wouldn't like uh, to watch it. But <laughs> no. this guy is a character. He's a character. It's fun to watch. And, uh, he's not the kind of person you'd want to fight in the first round. We talked about this as well, didn't we? I, no, definitely not. I will never fight him. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy, if not you, if you wake way. him up at 3 o'clock in the morning, he's ready for it. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So he wins by default, and it is tragic. Uh, as a Makanov of Kazakhstan, uh, injured, uh, can't uh, fight for the bronze medal. Yondon Perenli wins the bronze medal. A world title. Yes, it is. The award ceremony of the men under 66 kilos. Mariama on top of the heap again. Just uh, showed his class in that final against Lombardo. So here they are, the medalists of today in the category 66 kilograms. Yondon Perenlai from Mongolia. Shamilov from um, the Russian Judo Federation. And then uh, Lombardo from Italy, Mariama from Japan. Karelin. Oh, Miss Alexander Karelin uh, presented three time world champ, nine times, three time Olympic champion, nine times world champion. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Well, I think everybody uh, who was uh, from the same age and uh, uh, was in judo, I think uh, they were happy that he chose wrestling and not judo. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, bronze medals. Uh, the two bronze medalists here are um, Yonder Perenli of Mongolia, Shamilov of BJF. Silver medal goes to Manuel Lombardo of Italy, and this man here picks up his second world title in succession. And uh, Mariama, with a beautifully executed Yoko Tomanagi, wins the gold medal. If you look at Mariyama, you see relief. You know, like, okay, I've done it. I've done what I set out to do. Might not be the Olympics, but it's uh, certainly his job, where, you know, what he set out. I think a lot of pressure on him earlier today, Mariyama. Yep. A lot of pressure on him, and uh, the great Kosei Inui, the, the um, Japanese coach, he said there was quite a lot of pressure on him, but uh, he did it in the end. So the national anthem of Japan.
Some great performances on that rostrum from today. And a picture taken with one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And your boss, George Lopez, then under 66 kilograms. Yondon Perenli and Shamilov get the uh, bronze medals. Lombardo of Italy gets the silver. And Marayama of Japan wins his second world title. Well, end of day two. It's the end of day two. We're just going to have a little look at the uh, medals and uh, see Japan, of course, are going to be top of the medal uh, list with three gold medals.